Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install the beta version for macOS 12 Monterey in VirtualBox on a Windows 10 PC. Before we begin, let's take a look at the minimum requirements to get this installed on a PC. You're going to need at least 4 gigs of RAM, but 8 is recommended. For disk space, 80 gigs is the minimum, 150 will do you better. You're going to need at least two available CPU cores, so you need a quad-core PC. You need the Monterey ISO file, and you're also going to need VirtualBox installed. Now, if you don't already have VirtualBox installed, you can check out this video, and I'll show you how to do it. For everything that we're doing in this video, I'll be sure to include links in the description below so you can get up and running. And please consider subscribing to the channel to help us grow. So with that out of the way, let's start to install the operating system. So we're going to begin at the desktop and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to open up our Oracle VM manager and here it is. And what we want to do is create a new virtual machine. So we'll kind of click on the new button here. Next, we're going to click on the button at the bottom that says expert mode. We'll click on that. And in here, we're going to give it a name. So you can give it any name that you want, but you have to remember it because we're going to be referring it to it later. So I'm just going to type in Mac OS Monterey and the machine folder we're going to leave as default. We're not touching that. The type will have uh, Mac OS X, and we're going to want the 64-bit selected in the version. Now, for RAM, you can get away with 4 gigs of RAM, uh, but you really want to max this out as much as possible because this is a very intensive operating system. I'm going to say use at least 8 gigs of RAM if you want to play it safe uh, so it runs comfortably on your system. Below, we're going to leave the Create Virtual Disk Now option, and we're going to click on the Create button. And in here, we have the file location, which we're leaving as default. We're not making any modifications to, uh, to that. Below, we have the file size. By default, you're always going to get 20 gigs with VirtualBox, but we need a significant more amount of space. So 150, uh, some people say go up to 200 gigs. Uh, 150 should be enough. Uh, 80 is really pushing it. Uh, we're going to leave the hard disk file type as VDI and dynamically allocated is the option that we're selecting. And then you click on create. So we have to make a few modifications to the virtual box machine. Uh, on the left hand side, you want to make sure that it's selected and then click on the settings button up at the top. And so we have the settings for this virtual machine open. So we're going to want to click on the system option on the left hand side. The floppy disk we're going to uncheck and these three options are important. So you want to make sure they're all enabled. Under processor, we want to make sure we have at least two cores available. You can increase this as much as possible. The more you have, the better. Under display, we want to make sure that we max out the video memory. So you want to take this slider and go all the way you can in the green space. And then under storage, what we're going to be doing is under the SATA controller, we want to select the empty icon here. And before we continue with this part, you got to make sure that you know where your downloaded files are. So on my computer, I have it in my downloads folder. I have the ISO image here. We're going to need to refer to that right now. So we want to click on the empty icon and then click on the disk on the right hand side and then choose a disk file. Now in here, this is where you have to locate it. So we're going to go in my downloads and here's my ISO file and we're good to go. We're going to check this live option here. The next thing is USB. In here, by default, 2.0 selected, we want to select 3.0, and that's the last option, so you can click on OK. So that takes care of the settings. What we need to do right now is just select the VirtualBox Manager, click on Settings, and I recommend copying this name because we're going to refer to it, and you don't want to get this wrong. So make sure you have this exactly the way it is in here. Uh, now we're going to exit it, and we're going to be running the command file. So I'm just popping open the folder where everything is downloaded. We're going to be looking at this command file now. So we copied the name of the virtual machine, and now we're going to make a couple modifications and then run those commands. So here's the file. And we're going to go to the Edit menu at the top, select Replace. Okay, so we have this open, and we're going to paste the name below here. And this is the one that we copied. Okay, so we have that there. And now we're gonna be just uh, replacing all these VM names because these are just placeholders and we wanna uh, switch it to the name of the virtual machine that we have. So we have it here and all we have to do is replace all and it's gonna update the file. So this is the file that you're gonna be downloading. Link will be in the description and we're just updating it with the virtual name, the virtual machine name. Next, what we wanna do is open up our command prompt. So here's my command prompt. Now to get the command prompt open, you just hold down the Windows key, hit R, and then type in CMD. And we're going to paste these commands in one by one. The first one is to change the directory. And you can see now that we're in the directory for VirtualBox. So now we can run each individual command one by one. So I'm just going to be pasting them all in here. 
uh, one by one and hitting enter as I paste it in. So I paste it in, hit enter on your keyboard. Nothing will happen, it'll just come to the prompt, but it has been executed. So you do that for each one. Okay, so that part is done. So we're done with running the commands. We can just close out of this. You don't need to save any changes and we can just close the command prompt window as well. The downloads folder where everything is stored, we can just close that, get out of the way as well. And now we can jump back into our virtual machine and start it. So we're gonna select the virtual machine on the left-hand side, click the green start button, and it's gonna load up. Because this is the first time that we're running it, uh, you're gonna see a lot of different things that pop up here. It's very similar to other VirtualBox installations. A lot of white text coming up on a black screen. You could see some error messages in here. This is all normal and part of the installation phase. So I skip forward a bit here. And now we have the first option, which is to select the language that you're gonna be using. Let me just close out of these little options here. And so I'm gonna keep it at English and then you can click on the, click on the next button. And now we have the option and what we wanna do is we wanna prepare the drive. So what we're gonna be doing is selecting the disk utility option here. And once you have it selected, click on continue. In this window, we just wanna make sure that we can view all devices. We wanna find our virtual drive box which is right here. So you select on that, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna format it and erase it. So once you have it selected, you can then click on the erase option on the right-hand side in the menu. And this window is gonna pop open. Under name, you can leave it uh, as untitled or you can call it whatever you want. Uh, format, we wanna modify this and make sure that we have it as Mac OS extended, and then you can click on the erase option. What it's gonna do is it's just gonna format this drive to the correct one for Mac OS, and it's gonna set it up so we're ready to continue to the next step. Now that it's done, we can click on the done button and we're completely done with this option so we can close out of this window. So we're back at this menu and now we're ready to click on the install Mac OS 12 beta. You can click on continue and then we get this option here to click on continue again. And then we get the agreement options that come up. We just have to agree to both of them. And now we see our drive that we just formatted. We wanna select that and then click on continue. So this might take some time. It says it's about an estimated 12 minutes remaining. Uh, the actual installation will take, for me, it took almost two hours to complete the full process. There's a lot of waiting. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna just jump forward to the next step. Okay, so we have it done loading. And the first option is to select your region. And so in this example, I'm just gonna select the United States. And once you have that selected, you can click on continue. And that has written and spoken languages. I'm gonna leave everything as default so I can click on continue. But if you wanna change it, you can click on the customized settings in the left-hand corner. For accessibility options, I'm selecting not now. And for privacy and data, we can just click on continue. And now we have the migration assistant. Uh, if you were migrating on a Mac, you'd be able to migrate information from another Mac or a PC. I'm gonna select not now. And then sign in with your Apple ID. I'm gonna say set up later. When you install things like this on a virtual machine, you're not really gonna be able to use your Apple ID. In some cases, there's workarounds, but we can look at that in another video. So it's asking us, are we sure? And I'm gonna click on skip, and then we can move on to the next step, which is gonna be the terms and conditions. And you have to agree to this to continue. So we're selecting agree to both. And now we get to create our computer account. So this account is gonna be the one that you're gonna be signing into uh, as a user. This is gonna be the main account, so you just give it whatever name you want. It'll then auto-populate the account name. And now you just need to type in your password. You have to type it in twice. To keep things secure, I recommend just putting in an alphanumeric password. And then in hint, it's optional, but you can just fill it in with whatever you want. And then we're gonna click on continue. This next option is about services that it has to make this your new Mac. You don't have to have any of these on. Uh, you can also customize them if you want. You can just click on continue, which is the default option here. Screen time, I'm just gonna say set up later. Series enabled by default. Um, because this is on a virtual machine, I'm not sure how well it's gonna run. So I'm leaving that unchecked and I'm gonna click on continue. Next, you get to choose your look. If you wanna go with a light theme or dark theme, or you can have an auto shift depending on day and night. I'm gonna leave mine as light theme and then click on continue. So just loading up the desktop here, and the last option is uh, the keyboard assistant. Uh, the keyboard assistant setup, you can just close out of that. You don't actually need it. We have a little prompt at the bottom. And it looks like it's a feedback assistant. 
It's a welcome screen. So uh, you can just close this. So we have it up and running. So this is Mac OS version 12 Monterey, and this is a beta. So I just wanna make sure you're very clear that this installation is a beta installation. It's not gonna be smooth. Mac OS on VirtualBox doesn't really run great, but it runs decent and it's decent enough to use. Always keep in mind that you might have some leg issues here and there. Uh, that's why I'm always recommending to maximize the amount of space that you give it, maximize the amount of RAM. You're giving this uh, virtual machine enough horsepower to run as, as efficiently as possible. So that's how you do it. I hope you got it up and running. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, we're trying to go to the channel as much as possible. So I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. We have many other operating systems coming out. I'm also gonna be doing this on VMware if that's something that you're interested in. Everything we've done in this video will be linked in the description to my blog where you can download all the files that you need to get this up and running. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.